<laughs> hey, welcome everybody. Okay, so now <laughs> we're talking change of direction here. <laughs> Boom, there we go. So we're talking change of direction. So you're, you're in the center of the circle. The horse comes around here. And as soon as the horse's butt passes 11 o'clock, you back straight up. What I used to do wrong almost every time is I would back up this way or I would back in a J. Well, it changes the angles. And then what happens if you back that way, you end up pinching off the horse's angles when, because I want the horse to be able to do a nice swoopy turn right back. So straight back. And if you uh, have ever been to a clinic where you've done Liberty Draw or Online Draw, this angle, so if the horse is facing that way and you're this way, this is a really nice angle to get a draw coming like that. It looks a suspiciously like the, game, the catch me game. Horse comes in that way, you're just backing up like that. Once you see two eyes, and there's that game of two eyes again, then stop backing and send. And the horse will do a nice, nice teardrop right back, okay? And when I say send, you put energy on that horse's shoulder. So here, horse comes around, passes 11 o'clock, you back up, horse sees you with two eyes, there's two eyes, you start putting pressure on the shoulder, you get this nice swoopy turn back, and then you can walk back to the center of the circle. Same way this way. In level two, and there's an important element to this too that helps, in level two, and uh, I think that that's the first time that it's talked about is, uh, let's say you're facing this way, and your eyes are here in the center. Um, you, you, the the uh, correct uh, way to do this is wait for the horse to pass your shoulder and then do it. And, that ha and then when they pass your shoulder, you turn right here. That has the effect, so if this is your body and you turn right here, then back up, that has the effect of speeding the horse up. And it's nice to speed them up, especially if, as long as they don't get nervous, speed them up, especially because a lot of horses will slow down and break gait on your change of direction. And we want them to try to maintain gait throughout that change of direction. So another way to do this is right when you're here, lean forward a little bit, reach for the rope, put a little bit of, put a little bit of go a little faster in you or with your stick and string and speed them up right here. And then when they get here, back them up. And we'll see that when Pat does it. And that's more of a level three idea, okay? So uh, keep this geometry in your head and remember, catch, see if you're going straight back or not. If you're in an arena, you can look at your footprints and see if they go this, like a J, like Tom used to do, or they go straight back and straight forward. John Barr's got it so nice that he just leans back, maybe takes, doesn't even hardly even takes a step back and comes forward and this horse says, oh, I know what you want. Mm. Beautiful. And this is really important if you have level four dreams where if you wanna do flying change with this. Um, and again, all those reasons you all just stated, uh, draw, change of eyes, athleticism, equalizing is very important for changes of direction. Okay. Oh. Questions on that before we pay, play uh, Pat? I see Melissa's got a hand up. Go ahead, Melissa. So you're going to the left and you draw them in and you're asking for the change to the right eye. What if he won't give you that and he'll just step back over to the left? Uh, good question. So what I like to do in that uh, moment is um, work, uh, go back and work on the element. So the element is, could you be comfortable coming in? Um, another good thing to work on is to unwinding. The, if, if the issue is left eye to right eye, another good thing to do is bring them in and keep them on the left eye. And don't change eyes. In other words, we're breaking it into smaller component. So they're comfortable, first comfortable coming in. So say they're on the, let's see, they're going to the left, right? And uh, left, correct. <laughs> and you see their left eye. So instead of bringing them in and then they're not confident and just changing direction anyway, bring them in and let them stay on that left eye. Bring them right maybe almost to your shoulder. and Just pet them and say, good, that was great. 
and now try your yo-yo again and then send them the other way. That way they can gain some confidence coming in first before you put that change of eye on them. A couple, there's a lot of things in the program, <clears throat> pardon me, that can help you too. Unwinding, mm -hmm. where you put the rope around the horse's um, mm -hmm. zone yep. four and around and let them unwind, that helps a lot. Driving games, uh, 360s, all kinds of things to prepare them. But that's, that's a really great question. Does that answer yeah. the he, he, he braces as you try to cross the nose line mm -hmm. and will just reject it. So you, yeah. you almost have to force him over. It, he'll draw in, he stops on the, as soon as he'll straighten up, he won't come to the center and then he braces if you try to cross over. I he'll, would bet. He'll, he'll give you two eyes, but he'll protect that right eye. That's fairly common. That's fairly common. I have a horse like that, that if I leave him alone for a couple of days, it feels like this, this side of him, he's yeah. just funny yeah. about. Yeah. And that's, that's real common. Cause you know, those of you, you may not know this, <laughs> my horse has a tag. You may not know this, but uh, he was a rescue horse. Um, you know, we always do things on this side of the horse. We halter from this side, we saddle, to put the saddle on from this side, we do everything from this side, and a lot of horses miss that foundation of both sides. So um, do a lot more on this side, but I have a better answer. And, and it's, it's almost like that game of two eyes, but uh, who's seen the movie Wayne's World? I was just talking to, I think, Krista about this the other day. There was, uh, Mike Myers, Wayne's World, anybody, anybody, anybody? Older reference, lost on a younger crowd. Uh, anyway, he was a, he's a really funny comedian, but he was with his girlfriend and they were like looking at each other really close. And he said, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. And if you ever do that with anybody, like that person looks completely different from this eye to this eye. And that's what, what's happening with these horses. They have a fisheye lens and they're designed to see way along the periphery really well. And because of that, um, we, they don't really, like something that happens in this eye doesn't, it's new on this eye, it's different. So a lot of times we make an assumption that because they're okay on this side, they're not okay on this side. So here's what you do to be gentle with this, especially a horse that's having that, whenever you change sides, whether you're grooming, whether you're just hanging with your horse or whatever, don't just walk around. Stop here at in zone one and with the back of your hand, nose that over and say, may I come in and just give them a second? Thank you. And then work your way back. And then when you cross over again, even when you're crossing to the good side, don't just cross. Stop in the center in the back of your hand. Gently move it over to that other eye. May I come in? No. May I come in? Yes. <laughs> and then work your way back. Make sense? Just, just that little bit, um, I've noticed on s several horses that have had this problem, they just melt. They go, oh, he gets it. He knows that I know that I have a problem that he knows. And so the trust level just goes way higher with that. So, but it has to be the back of your hand because it'll slow you down. And this is like a make. It feels like pressure. This is like, oh, would you mind coming over to that other side? So that can really help out a lot, uh, along with the other things. But And then do a lot more on this side. Great question. Thank you, Melissa. Cool. Are you ready to see Pat's video on this? Good. Um, before we play this, this is right from the Four Savvies, and it's level three. Um, Linda did a level two one with a horse that was really having some confidence issues. So it was really nice. It's really nice to go back and see that, um, especially if you haven't looked at the Four Savvies program in a while. By the way, commercial time, the Four Savvies is the program. It's like a college curriculum uh, and it's really quite, quite good. Um, all my Florida people have been saying, you know, I'm going to Ohio, but that doesn't mean that you can't still improve and go through this program. Um, it's meant to be self-study, self self-empowering. And then uh, you've got us on video or Pirelli instructors around or uh, any chance you can get over to Pat and Linda Pirelli. That's pretty, pretty great too. So carry on. So here is Pat's version of... 
circle, and this was, as I said, in level four, uh, this one's level three, pardon me, circle game. And I thought it was pretty handy because he used his 45 foot line with this. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to mute Pat because I think it's, now nah, we'll just leave the sound on, but watch the man, watch the man's hands, watch those angles if you can see him. Backwards away from him, but in the direction I want him to go. All right, there we lost our gate. So I'm going to drop that coil. I'm going to walk backwards. I'm going to gain a coil here before I walk backwards. Lean forward, lean back. Cluck to a loop. There we go. And then drop the coil as he goes. This is something that would be a really good exercise for you. Walk backwards and in the direction. There we go. And Pat froze. <laughs> but could you see the angles? It was pretty obvious. Let me let me go back so you can see him again. Even even when Pat turned and decided to do it at a different place, um, it was it was very very obvious that that's what he was intending. And uh, I thought it was easy, much easier to see the angles there uh, with the distance that he had going. But he had the exact angle. It was one o'clock or eleven o'clock, and he walked straight backwards. So try that next time you're playing with your uh, change of direction. Any questions on that? That was my big my big presentation. Good. What other common things would happen? Um, that, what are some pitfalls that might happen? And Melissa already said one of them is like my horse is not coming in with confidence. Does not looking at me with two eyes, but doesn't want to change eyes. What other things might all, might all might all happen? You can raise your hand and ask, or put it in the comments. Horse races through the change of direction. Yep, that's happened. I've seen that recently. So um, what'll happen is you'll come to do the change of direction, and you're backing up, you're backing up, and the horse just doesn't change. They just keep going. They race right through it, or they change really dramatically and almost run you over. Um, so the answer there is to get, um, I heard Ray, Ray Hunt say, no, it was Tom Dorrance I heard say this uh, on a video or something. He said, it's a good idea to have positive control of the hindquarters. In this case, it's a good idea to have positive control of the shoulder. So what's broken there is a bit of confidence, but what's really broken is the shoulders. If they just race on through, I've seen somebody almost get knocked over because the horse came and didn't yield the shoulder and got really close to the human and veered at the very last second and they almost got pushed over. Um, that's um, shoulders and um, confidence issue. So what I would do is go back again, go, I'm always thinking there's the problem, it's always back a step. So a couple things could be broken, Con positive control of the shoulder. So when the horse does come, are they cool with asking the shoulder over? And the second one is just lack of confidence altogether. So I would do more disengages, especially if it's a, a really fast run through or shoulders you in the middle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. That was it. Um, so breaking down the shoulder control is really good on that one. Um, there's a really good game called Falling Leaf, which is real nice for this because it has a hind quarter. And then as the horse gives you two eyes, you change and push the front end. Um, that's a real nice one. Maybe we ought to do a video of that for next week. I'm going to make a note of that. Somebody make a note of that. Mike, make a note of that. <laughs> There's my pen. Okay, got a note. So that would be a neat one to see because that is another great way for to help what Melissa talked about, getting that horse used to um, changing eyes and yielding shoulder. And another thing, we talked that two weeks ago about the banana. Remember the banana stuff? Um, if your horse is out of flexion on your circle game, not looking to the center, then you're going to struggle with the change of direction. Uh, the other question was horse, uh, horse stops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a, an impulsion issue. So the horse just, just stopping instead of coming on in. So um, what's in it? Usually that's an introverted horse. So what's in it for me? So I play, I play a game with um, Styx is probably our left brain introvert horse these days. And I play a game, put four treats in my pocket. And after a whole bunch of circles, 
and, and he can do a lot of circles. He's very athletic and he gets relaxed and he gets in rhythm and there's connection. I wait for it. Sometimes it happens in four laps. Sometimes it's 10 laps. And we're talking out on the 45 with him. And as soon as I got all that, I say, come on in, buddy. And I look at that hind quarter and he comes in and he loves it. He loves to come in, not only because it's game over, but <laughs> I give him a treat. He just loves that. And so he's putting effort into that. And then after a few of those, I'll say, okay, okay, let's come on in. And would you mind going the other way? And then I only let him go a lap or two and I bring him on back in, give him a cookie. So he's, he's thinking this is pretty cool. Uh, so that's another way to get them to think in. The other thing um, that would help, and it came up when we did Mike's um, figure eight. Uh, if you look at uh, level four uh, online, no, level four Liberty with Pat Pirelli. And he shows this uh, really quite expertly. Um, and we talked about it a little. I'm gonna draw it on this piece of paper here. So there it is right there. I don't know if you can see that there. Whoops. Might not be the best way to see it, but it's a circle and you see the two dots. Those are barrels. I'm gonna to have to draw that one for next time. That's not a very good example. Anyway, it's the circle game, uh, it's like in a round pen. And then there's a barrel here and a barrel here right next to the rail. So the horse can get past the barrels. Uh, and so you put them out on a circle, canter around to the outside of those barrels inside of the round pen. And then right when they pass a barrel, draw them in right down the center and get that draw really fast right at that barrel marker. So having the barrel there causes them to round and come in quick. And they really like that. And that's a good, good way to help a horse that has low impulsion on change of direction. So thank you for that question. What is the phase? What is the phrase Pat uses? Connection is good, but control is better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's it. Um, con uh, con connection is king is what he says a lot. Um, and uh, if you're on an out of control situation, control's definitely better, yes. And it'll keep you safe. Yep. I had a, uh, this is a, I, I, the horse was a kind of a well-known horse in Pirelliville called Bandit. Anybody know Bandit? This was years ago. Bandit was a, uh, a left brain introvert, but super high spirit level. And he just about ran Linda Pirelli over in a Savvy Club DVD. And so I got to work with Bandit one day and I didn't know this. I, I guess I kind of heard the story, but I didn't know it was this horse. And so I went in the round pen and everybody walked out of the office to come watch. That should have been my clue. I was in trouble. <laughs> I could say, oh, Tom's got Bandit in the round pen at Liberty. Let's see what happens. And that horse came at me. I mean, he came at me and I was like, whoa, that's interesting. And he just went and ran that shoulder right into me. And, and I, I put up a fairly big block and he turned at the last second. I was able to stand my ground, but I went, hmm, we're going back online right now. <laughs> and so I went back online and knowing his personality, I made him, I asked him to creepy crawl that change of direction one little step at a time. And then gently asked his shoulder and it was so slow that he was like, Ugh, can I please speed this up a little? I'm like, yeah. But then I did it a few times, did it online, took him off, did it one time at a nice slow walk, and he did this beautiful change of direction, put him back online, and I left. And everybody was disappointed that I didn't get ran over. But that was that that was that was a great example of that horse was um, really dominant. That was a dominance issue. That wasn't a fear issue at all on that horse. And adding more pressure with a high spirited horse like that would have just upped, upped the whole thing, up the tension, up everything. And a horse like that, uh, that, that kind of left brain introvert, you don't want to fight, put, make it into a fight or anything. It's like, oh, well, what's in it for you? Well, you do it nice and slow, it's relaxed and you get to stop or have cookies and scratches or stuff like that. Great. Any other questions on those things? Those are really good. Had somebody asked me recently about phases and when to use a control phase since that came up. So just to clarify, control phase is right to phase four. 
So you're in a situation where your horse is going to run into you, they're going to hit, they run into another horse, you need to go right to phase four, that's control phase. Uh, n n <laughs> if the horse is about to run you over, you don't go. <laughs> I'm about to get run over. <laughs> Do something big right away. So that, that's what control phase is. And um, somebody was asking about out in a field with a bunch of horses because their fear was that there were in a whole pile of horses was going to start running at them fast uh, on their way to past this, this person. And so I said, the best thing you can do in that scenario is jumping jacks and keep in your hand, whatever's in your hand. If you do jumping jacks, that makes you look so big to the horses, they'll just get out of the way. And it's, it's, it's a huge control phase because you're already lifting and swinging and if you can, you know, just tons of jumping jacks. And if you're terrible at jumping jacks, well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Excellent. Any other questions on those issues? Beautiful. All right, we are ready for the next thing here. I did all that, did all that, did all that. Mary's submission. She has a really sweet thing going on with this mule. And I want to show you uh, a couple of outtakes from her video. And then I uh, want to ask Mary a few questions about it. And then you all can ask Mary questions too, if you like. Uh, so uh, let me get the time code right. Come on over here. And don't throw up while I move the screen. Thank you. Pat's still frozen. So this is about uh, eight minutes in. All right, that was really nice. And the thing I wanted to highlight to all of you, if you didn't see it, or maybe you weren't in our um, session three weeks ago with Rosemary's lesson when we were doing direct rein, indirect rein position, you can see Mary's direct rein and indirect position in her body. So you can see she's in an indirect rein position. Now you can see she's in a direct rein position. See that? And the, horse, and the mule's responding beautifully for that. That was really, really nice. Really nice balance in both the rider and the mule. So I was very proud of that moment right there. That was really sweet. And then I wanna back up for a second and show you. I don't have the exact time code, but I'm sure I'll find it. So that's a nice change. It's a simple change. There's a left lead. Next, next week, we might want to do footfalls. And there's the flying change. Woo! Yeah, well done, Mary and Paris. Yeah, so the thing that was that was really great is uh, I, what I want you to do is uh, yeah, awesome, Mary. <laughs> Look at all the comments. <laughs> you should. That was really good. Uh, raise your hand if you know uh, what a flying change is. Okay, I see some hands up, some hands down. Raise your hand if you've ever ridden a horse and done a flying change on purpose. <laughs> 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 All 
Great. So next week, what I want to do, I don't want to do it this week because I want to get on to talking to Mary because uh, there's a lot of really good stuff on that video. Um, but uh, I, I want to go through that. Uh, what are the footfalls for walk, trot, canter, and gallop and what it looks like and the reason why we should start to feel that and know that uh, regardless of whether we have high competition goals or not because um, it's, it's, it's a really nice balancer for the horse and good to feel and know. Uh, so anyway, Mary, fantastic. I, was, I thought that was really great. Um, there, there were so many nice things about that. Um, and that is, uh, Paris is not, um, you can talk a bit about Paris's horse and alley a little bit, but when Paris has tension, Paris has tension. And you've done a really nice job with that. And I just want to give you a shout out also, because I know you had some surgery right before this video was taken. So thumbs up on that too. So Mary, would you mind unmuting and uh, say hi to everybody? Hello, hello. Yes, I am three months post-op for a new replacement on Monday. Wow. I was back on in four weeks. <laughs> so it can be done. And, and your doctor said it was okay, right? Uh, he had said six weeks when I asked him. So and I was doing well in rehab. <laughs> well, it was some pretty gentle riding for those first two, but then we... <laughs> We both got stronger because she was, of course, off for a few weeks, too. Great. Well, I wonder if I could ask you, uh, the, big, the question I have is you've been in this program for a bit and um, you've been making steady progress. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, you've been to the Florida campus uh, yes. and taken some classes. Can you tell us what classes you took there and what they and, and what what was the maybe one or two things that might have been the biggest takeaway? Uh, the first ones we did uh, would have been three years ago, maybe four this year, uh, was with Ryan um, Fouts. Fouts? Oh. Yeah. Fouts. <laughs> Fouts. Yes, for finesse. That was a one week course. And of course, we didn't want to haul down there for just one week, so then we had a week in between, and then we took a two-week um, advancing four savvies. So the finesse, we were ready for the finesse, and it was uh, nice to get the basics and reinforcement of the basics. And the um, advancing four savvies, of course, took us help find the holes and do some fixes for the holes that we had in all four savvies. And then the most recent one that we went was uh, four week focus. And that was so, so, so good. Um, that was with Todd Owens from Canada. He was our instructor. And we had some teaching from Pat and Linda also but it was, it really drilled down to finding, I think finding in ourselves more what we needed to bring out the best in our animal. That's excellent. That, that really is excellent. Cause a lot of, a lot of times um, horsemanship journey doesn't look like this. A lot of times it looks like this. It all it eventually keeps going, but sometimes there's plateaus and it's in, and dips and things, or um, it's, it's almost like you get something and then a whole new world opens up of the next things you're supposed to get. And so it feels like you're plateauing, but in reality, you're still advancing on your way up. So. That's, that's really powerful. And um, I, I want to credit you for getting uh, around as many people as you can to help uh, and make that happen because it's evident in what I saw on that video. It's really, really nice. So um, what was the hardest thing? What is the hardest thing or what are you working on with Paris? Our hardest thing, we've been struggling with the flying lead changes forever. And my biggest breakthrough was finding how to get her to relaxation. 
and she's mules in general anyway are very stoic and they don't show she is a right brain introvert so i can blow her up if she gets too tense and it's just like <gasps> and she's gone uh but now i rode today and within the first minute or two she was blowing out so you know we're finally finally making much more progress because i've found those keys well fantastic does it does anybody have any questions for mary All right, well, Mary gets a big round of applause, everybody, so go ahead and, <laughs> I don't know if you can see all that clapping, Mary, but it's there. Oh, <laughs> That's really cool. I yeah, should well, hear in about a week. Loren is about three weeks out on uh, whether I'll great. pass or I have to do a resubmit for my flying change to the right or not. Okay. Fantastic. Well, it looked, it looked really nice to me, yes. Yeah, and that, that's the nice thing about that process of doing the auditions is um, it, it helps you move forward and uh, it it's not doesn't have to be perfect, which I really like that. It's supposed to be an overall impression of of where you're at in the program. So it does not have to be perfect. That's oh, there's a question. What are what are the keys to? Oh, we got a question, Mary. We got a thanks, Mike. Um, how did she get relaxation, or what are the keys of relaxation? Um, why don't you answer that, Mary? What what works for getting her to relax? Uh, for Paris, she nose patterns like a figure eight um, a, online I would do a figure eight online because she can set into that pattern at a trot because of course canter would require a lead change and then she would get too tense but walk trot and then if she is feeling better we can feed it up um, when I'm riding doing the corners game doing the uh, Clover leaf, just getting her in those patterns so that, oh, okay, I know this, I can do this. It helps her a lot. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Pat, I asked Pat about, cause I was having trouble with Spark with flying lead changes. Like he could do them, do them online Liberty and I was kind of getting them, but it wasn't consistent. And I wasn't getting the lead change when I wanted the lead change. It would be late every time. And for a long time, I was only getting the change in the front, not the back. And it's because I didn't understand straightness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's common too. Uh, but what he said, he didn't tell me any of that. He said, he looked at me and said, you need to make it a game. I went, huh? And then L Linda's answer was, there's tension in the ribs. So they can't do it if there's tension in the ribs. So uh, the game turned into, uh, I finally figured, I asked more questions, of course, because <laughs> I was like, what are they talking about? I don't get it. The game turned into stay on the circle stay on the circle, stay on the circle until there's relaxation and connection and bet bending correct and everything's good. Then do the lead change and then go somewhere and rest. It didn't take much time for that horse to go, oh, I, if I'm relaxed, I can, I can do this. It's kind of fun. And then I get to, I, I get to chill out or I remember the day I figured it out. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. I got the change and I was smart enough to get off the horse, unsaddle him, and put him out to the field with his buddies. And the next day he, he offered it. He just offered the changes. I'm like, ah, <laughs> everything was in place, but the relaxation wasn't there. And then because he was a left brain introvert, the motivation really wasn't there. So yeah, you're right. You're dead on Mary. That was great. Um, does anybody have any other, Mary might have some, or does anybody have any other ideas of how to re get some relaxation in a, a maneuver like that? I see Shakya, you have your hand up. Go ahead, Shakya. Well, I had a question about um, how she got to, um, <clears throat> it's a little bit the same, but it's, it's a little more detail. So today she had a ride and she was, she was um, blowing out within two minutes. What exactly did she do that she could do that? that she could relax that quickly? Is it because she always does the corners game? Is it like, okay, I know what we're doing or is it, was it something else or what was it? And also what is it within her that she found that helped with relaxation? Yeah, and just, just uh, Mary, Mary can answer that, but um, 
the, the first portion of the video I played was later in the video. And so like, I think it was like 30 seconds in, we had that nice relaxation. And then, so, but that was later in the video. So just to, just for the time code of it all. So Mary, what, what do you think? What's, what, what get that horse to go or that mule to go? Uh, well, today it was just, it was saddling slowly. Uh, giving her some time. Uh, I took her down to the arena and just left her while I set up my video camera. Again, just gave her a little time. And I hadn't ridden since I did that audition. That was two weeks ago. We've been doing some fencing anyway, but it seems when we take some time apart and we really hit that hard. I think we videoed like three days in a row and, oh, I forgot something or this didn't work. I didn't get the change. So we had been really kind of drilling on them. So I purposely, and because we're busy, didn't ride for two weeks. I did play online some. And today we did more finesse. And again, I just started doing the finesse warm up and doing some nice circles, moving her ribs, asking her to move different ways. And she was good. She would just move so nicely and was relaxed. Somebody, somebody, told, me, somebody told me once that um, they, won't, they won't do anything with their horse until they blow. So they'll stay at the walk, everything at the walk, and they'll wait and wait and wait. And sometimes it takes a long time until they get relaxation then they'll go on to the trot uh and i thought that was interesting and that was a non non pirelli person a non-natural horsemanship kind of person and, uh, i just i remembered that when we talk about how important relaxation is um and my horse sticks the same thing i won't i won't go on until he's and he's got these little he's got a little dimple right here that looks like, looks like that and when that's there like that, I know he's not relaxed. He kind of looks, the rest of him kind of looks relaxed, but I see that dimple. He holds a little tension in his mouth. So that's, that's one of my things to do is you sort of get to know your horse and you know when they're about to, you know, let it go and, and get relaxed. Yeah. Excellent. For Paris, it's one nostril will be pulled up more than the other one. <laughs> you really know her. That's awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Pam has a question. Go ahead, Pam. Hi, <laughs> um, I'm wondering how you um, teach the, the flying change. I don't know anything about how you go about that. Um, that's an excellent question. There's, um, what I suggest you do is take a look at uh, Pat's freestyle level four in the Four Savvies. That's a great introduction to it. And he's also got a really good DVD called Leads and Lead Changes um, that explain the a lot of the mechanics behind it. Um, it's, it can be very simple because horses will change leads on their own out in the field. You just start watching them when they're running. They just go to change the direction. It's just easier to be on that right lead when they're going to the right and easier to the left. There's all kinds of mechanical ways to make it happen. But I always look at those and go, I'll see somebody riding and they'll just go, and they'll, it, the, everything's all jerky and you can, it's, it's tension. And, but the people who are understanding of the horse's nature, um, let the horse decide to do it really. And it's a very simple game of sideways, a little bit of sideways and go, a little bit of sideways and go. And that little bit of sideways changes the flexion. So, 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 you're, so you're changing leads when you're changing direction. You're not like if they're going in a circle one way, you're not trying to get them to change. That's what I thought you were trying to do. Uh, it's, it's, it's all connected to that change of direction. Now, sometimes you can be on the wrong lead on purpose. It's called counter cantering. And there's, there's a good, good studied way of doing that and a reason for that. Um, it's very athletic to, to do that. I have a horse that counter canters all the time but not on purpose, <laughs> he's getting better. He's getting better. Um, but, but they will do it, the horse would do it naturally if it's a question, this is why it's a level four thing, it's a question of that body flexion. Uh -huh. Put it on the camera there so you can see it. So if they're here, they're on that lead. And if they're oh. that way, they're gonna be on that lead. So um, I think we can um, do some, um, a little bit of uh, 
better job with that next next class. That would be a really good one for next class to show um, show what that looks like, really. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, and there's all kinds of like my goal when I first got on campus. Somebody asked me what I wanted to do. I said I want single tempi lead changes, and they're like, "Ah, oh, geez." <laughs> but we're but the elements of that are in all of the program. Um, and it starts with hind quarter yields, four quarter yields, sideways, um, balancing the horse. Um, and it does take, it's a, it's a gymnastic thing. And uh, at first, uh, when I was first learning, I had, to, I had to fly. I mean, I had to really go fast to get it. And uh, once I was able to get that, then I was able to refine it down in a more uh, finesse kind of way. But at first it was like, this is a little cowboy. -y. I mean, I was like almost galloping and going over a pole and changing direction. And, uh, and it was, it was really fun, but I was like, wow. And, but the, hor the horse was like, we're really moving fast. And now we're going to go this other direction. I think I'll just change leads. And so it was the horse's idea to do it. Good. Marianne has a question. Hi, Marianne. There we go. Um, so earlier you were talking about uh, going, I'm going back to the lead change, applying lead change, going in a circle until you get relaxation and then asking for that change of direction and the lead change, flying lead change. And then putting the horse up, you know, good boy, great job, put him up. So what if you do that and you know kid, what if you do that and you don't get it or you get the front, not the back, which is typical for him, do you, you go back on the circle until you get it. I mean, we could be there for hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's funny. I remember that, yeah, that's, everything has to be in place first for that to happen. I mean, he has to know how to do them. Um, usually like with, with, if it's on, are you talking online or riding or Liberty? Well, you were, it sounded like you were talking about riding. So, uh, yeah. I, Either way, because in, in either setting, you need to get that relaxation before you ask for that change. So I guess what I'm saying is if I feel like I've got that relaxation and I ask for the change and I don't get it, to keep at it and work on, I'd say work on the element of it. So like if uh, I know kid and sometimes he doesn't elevate his back end, which is kind of similar to what Mary's been dealing with, with getting the change in the front, but not the back. Okay. So finding a way to elevate the back end, jump pole works really well. Um, I remember kid when he was healthy, um, putting a little bit of energy on his hindquarter as he did the change in an upward fashion, helped him just elevate mm -hmm. and give him a reason to make the change. Um, uh, other, uh, but basically I would say go back to elements of like, does he need to go, come straighter? Um, does, does he need to maintain gait? Does he need, is it an impulsion issue? Um, so find out what, what the issue is, try to back up a little bit. Otherwise, if you just keep banging on the change, it's going to get more tense and more tense. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And that's the, you know, the guy, I keep saying the guy in me would just bang on it until they did the change. And it's like, well, why isn't this going well? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Well, hey, since we got Marianne on the line, Marianne, uh, you're next. Ah, <laughs> oh no. So um, I want to show you this um, uh, just as a bit of inspiration. Um, and uh, then uh, actually, before, Marianne, why don't you in, in two sentences or less, tell us how bad was kid last year at this time? Could not this walk, could not walk. It was, it was awful. He was going through a bout of laminitis and some severe huge uh, abscesses in both front feet and he would take a couple steps and almost fall down it was heartbreaking and come you long ways yeah you told me that and i heard the words but until i saw the video i was i was you showed me the video i'm like oh my gosh well anyway kids doing much much better so marianne just sent me this video and i want to show you all it and this is our inspirational Everybody okay? <laughs> I think I just dropped the computer. Sorry, Mike, it's Mike's computer. So let me get over to that. And it's our inspirational moment here. Fun at Liberty. Here we go.
<laughs> Yay! <laughs> all right. That is so, so good. So let's all give Marianne a big round of applause. That was really, really nice, Marianne. So as soon as those, as soon as that horse is healthy, get keep videoing, keep videoing. <laughs> He's great. Well, that's about as much time as we have for tonight. Um, I'll stay on. We'll go ahead and stop in just a second. Um, and I'll stay on and answer as many questions as you want, or if you just want to hang out, that's fine too. Uh, I've, I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, our circle of friends back in Dayton, we get on um, FaceTime and uh, chat with each other once a week. And it's, re it's really helped us through, through all the stay at home orders and things like that. So it's really great to connect. This is a great way to do it too. Um, so next week, next Saturday, same time, same channel, we'll be in Ohio. So I'll be probably shivering. And uh, we'll do footfalls and a um, uh, couple other like uh, gate kind of things. And then please, uh, if you're interested in becoming a part of this, send me a video. And um, if you want some help also, it's a great, great format to send a video, short video in, like I said, and do the, do the thing. And Shakya, don't forget, you've got, you've got a 40 minute credit for a video lesson. So congratulations, that's really great. Uh, oh yeah, don't be afraid to, somebody's just reminding me, encourage everyone to video, <laughs> video often. It does help out a lot because uh, you can really see, I always see, it, it, the first time I always see all the mistakes and all the weirdness. I was like, I didn't know my hand was there. And blah, blah. But then when I look at it the second time with a different frame of mind to look at all the good stuff that's happening, uh, that, that's, some, that's really helpful too, because then you know what to replicate. I would love to, but I don't have anyone to video for me. Yeah, that's hard sometimes. Um, if you can do a cell phone and set it up on a tripod, that could work. Or if you want to get really fancy, Marianne was using a, was it a Pixo? Is that right, Marianne? The little camera that follows you? No, it's a solo shot. It's Say that again? Solo shot. Solo shot? So I use a Pixio. S-O-L-O -O shot. Yeah, that worked really nice. There's a, couple, there's, there's a couple other brands of it out there too, but that one looked really nice. Um, they're not the cheapest thing in the world, right? But um, that, that's kind of a nice thing to have. Or find a kid. <laughs> or the tripod works, or it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, and, and definitely doesn't need to be, you know, publishable quality, just as long as we can see you and your horse, that's good enough. Well, fantastic, everybody. Solo shot. Thank you, Marianne. Um, thank you very much. I'll post uh, most of this recording to the uh, website, and uh, we won't tell anybody else that I missed the whole first 10 minutes of the recording. And uh, thanks, everybody, and have a great, great week. Stay safe. Enjoy your families. Enjoy your horses. Enjoy your cooking. And uh, let's do a savvy clap to end the session. Savvy. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Tom. And thanks, everybody, for the great videos. Thanks to all of you. It's all good to see you all. <laughs>